Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So some people would say New Guitar Day. Well, today is New Car Day. Wow, that just sounds like shit. All right, so this is the new vehicle. Ford Escape SE. Kind of cool, kind of nice, very roomy. Lots of room. I mean, even the back seat's got, like, lots of foot room. I like the Saturn. So I had to get rid of my Saturn because of the fact that, well, the body was in good shape the engine had a hundred and fifty six thousand miles plus on it the engine ran fine I mean as far as any problems go with you know running the car and shit like that and going from place to place there really was no problems with the interior was still nice you know audio video system inside of it got a little bit of the bass going on I end up putting a Pioneer head unit, Infinity speakers all the way around with the CT Sounds 12 inch and then two Pioneer digital amps. And uh, that also went with the car. Oh, plus there was a monitor on the back headrest of the passenger seat for the whoever sat in the back seat watching a movie on a long trip or something. So, yeah, this thing is kind of cool. The only problem with the Saturn was that, um, well, even though the body was in good shape, even though the interior was in good shape, even though the engine ran like a top, the undercarriage rusted out. And when I mean undercarriage, I mean whatever supports that were holding the ass end suspension in place was gone. All the C-channels that were for, because it's a unibody, there were C-channels underneath the vehicle that were actual, like, frame supports of the vehicle. And it ended up uh, just rotting out to where the ass end was just held on by fucking chewing gum. Because it was making all kinds of noises in the back. So I was like, well, you know what? I've been looking at vehicles for shit since March. And I really couldn't find anything that was worth the fuck as far as being new with low mileage on it. Hell, even finding something old with low mileage on it was a pain in the ass. Until I came across this thing over at my friendly Ford dealer. Yes, it's a Ford. I'm not used to Fords. I'm used to mostly GM and Chrysler. But it's a change. So, it's white. As you saw in the pictures, I'm going to probably, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this car yet as far as audio system goes because that Sync 3 shit sucks. Now, the nice thing about it is it's a lot of integration as far as the vehicle goes uh, into the radio. But a lot of it you can't access while you're driving because of safety reasons and stuff. And when you shut the car off, the car radio starts beeping at you and tells you to look in the back seat because maybe there's somebody there. Which, well, the funny thing is, is when you put your seatbelt on, on the dashboard, the car tells you how many people are in the car. Which, I don't know why, but it comes up on that little display over there. So right now I have it set for a speedometer, but if I go into menu... You see it's got speedometer, fuel economy, trip, eco, eco coach, which I don't care about that shit. Calm screen, which just basically turns it blue and there's nothing else on there. Uh, so if I go back, and I go back. This, drive assist, kind of nice. I mean, I'm, I haven't used it yet, but it, you know, gives you bells and whistles and a little bit of vibration in the steering wheel. Or it could put you right back into place if you end up drifting out of the lines. Music, you know, that's kind of what's going on on the radio right now. Uh, device detected, that is my cell phone. 
there's the car. Now that really doesn't show you much or do anything, it's just a vehicle. And then it gives you like, you know, how long the vehicles you've been running, uh, miles, shit like that, your fuel, everything else, which I'm gonna need to get gas pretty soon. Now, this thing is kind of nice because it's got a setting here to where if I push this, I got normal driving, eco, sport mode, shitty weather, and more shitty weather, which turns off the uh, control as far as uh, traction shit. I keep it on normal right now. I had it on sport. Oh, it's a four cylinder with a fucking turbo, all right? Also on like highways and shit like that, it drops one cylinder so it saves you on gas. There is so much, now this is the shit that I wanted to stay away from, all right? This is the shit that I wanted to stay away from with, with these cars and stuff that I didn't want to have a bunch of bullshit as far as, you know, all this shit here and, okay, let's go over here and go into settings. Look at this, more shit. Radio stuff I get, clock, okay, Bluetooth phone, media, driver assistance, why? Vehicle, Ford Pass content, which is, is basically shit on the fucking Ford Passing, which I have hooked up. Uh, general shit, Wi-Fi, yes, there's Wi-Fi in here. You can use the car as a hotspot. Uh, this is kind of nice. Now, this is a 911 uh, assist. If you have this set up and turned on, you're basically uh, getting to an accident. This will phone the police and get you help right away. Uh, automatic updates, which that's also connected to Wi-Fi. Mobile apps. All right. Now, unless you're connected to something, you really don't have any mobile apps. Uh, Android Auto, which is kind of nice because even though the phone has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all the other shit on it, and so is the car, uh, you still have to plug in your phone, and then you have a display on here that basically is your maps. So you don't have to have GPS built into the radio. Display, which is basically setting up, you know, your whole shit over here. Voice connect, which whatever. Uh, valet mode, I am not going to use. Test. Now, this is a hack, all right? What this is, is if you hold down the button on here for fast forward to the next track and fast forward to the next track here, if you hold those both down at the same time, you get into the radio of the settings that they don't want you to play with. And what happens is, is you have a test setting which will go through, there's tweets inside of the dash, there are full range speakers in the doors and full range speakers in the back doors. And what that does is it goes through a test pattern of different frequencies, high, mids, kind of lows, and it does each speaker individually. So you can tell if something's blown or something, it'll fucking sound crackly or whatever. Or you can also get in there to change some things. Now, another guy on YouTube did this, and I'm going to show you and tell you not to do it, but I'm not going to go and get into the settings now. All right. Now, you got themes over here. If you click on themes, like I said, this is shit that you're not supposed to be getting into. You got a whole list of fucking themes, all right? Ford Mustang, Ford Shelby, Shelby R. Uh, you can get into Lincoln fucking stuff. Those are, some of these are different resolution screens. Like this is an eight inch screen on here, touch screen. Um, the problem with this is if you choose the wrong one of these, to change your splash screen as far as what comes on here when you're, uh, you know, first open the doors and shit. And mine just shows the Ford emblem. Uh, if you change one of these to something that you're not familiar with or you don't know what size screen is in that vehicle, you're going to fuck up big time and have a real hard time getting this thing set back to normal resolution because there are screens on for this thing that are actually uh, elongated as well. So if you, like mine, this is side to side, got some that are going up and down horizontal to where uh, it's narrow and longer. Well, some of those screen settings are in this for themes, and I, I already done this, so it became a, it was a pain in the ass to do, to get out of it. 
but uh, what ended up happening is I ended up uh, having to scroll very little to find the right setting to get back into the themes under settings and everything was buried down here and there was no screen down here so this top part over here was basically kind of blank everything was moved down a little bit yeah that was a pain so i'll never do that again so the guy who ended up putting a video on youtube of how to hack or whatever the radio i give you this because that is the worst fucking thing you can possibly do especially if because he's like oh i'll just set mine up for for 4g uh mustang gt and it's like Okay, go ahead and he did and he's like oh it's working pretty good and uh, this is kind of different it changed all the little icons down here and everything else it's like okay well that's nice but he didn't change it into anything else and didn't show that you could fuck up big time so there's a lot of shit in this car which I'm probably not going to use but the main thing I want that I use is this button right here which is an A with a circle on it and as you can see it's highlighted off well that button right there if you don't shut this off, every time you come to a stop, your vehicle shuts off. And then when you release the brake, it starts up again. Well, that's kind of wear and tear on your starter. And I don't like that very much at all. This is the button here to change for different modes of the vehicle, for different tractions and sport and everything else. This one here, uh, I keep this one off. If I push the button, it'll say on on here, which I don't want it on. What this does is if you're sitting at a light and say if you are got a big old freight train that's coming down the uh, rails and stuff and you, uh, you know, get tired and shit like that and you don't want to put the car in park because, you know, I don't know, for some fucking reason. This button here, you could turn it on, take your foot off the brake pedal and it will keep the car locked in position to where you will not be rolling or moving, which is fine. I mean, if you want to use it, that's good. And, gauge your own but I can see this as being a little bit of a problem parking brake is a pain in the ass as well so you put your foot on the brake engage to put this switch over here it comes up on the dash in your information area in the middle of the dashboard what's going on and also uh, shutting this off you have to put your foot back on the brake and then turn this thing again then it also over here tell you if you fucked up It'll tell you if your your foot wasn't on the brake, it'll tell you to put your foot on the brake and try again. So, yeah, fun stuff. I mean, there's so much shit. And even under the settings over here, if I go into the, uh, let's see, not display mode, if I go into vehicle. I mean, you've got everything. 30-minute idle max, max idle, uh, rear occupant alert, so it'll tell you if there's somebody's in the back seat. My key to where you can sit there and change settings of the vehicle depending on who has what key fob, and that's another thing I don't like. Uh, onboard serial, modem serial number, remote start, set up your windshield wipers, your lighting, your locks, door key code, and that's, that's uh, there's a push... A touch panel on the side of the door that lights up red and what that's going to do is that's going to tell you you to put in a five digit number which is kind of like the old Lincoln uh, town cars and shit used to have a keypad on the driver's side door and you'd be able to get unlock and lock your doors uh, without having to keep now the one thing I can't stand about this car other than shifting with a rotary knob is this fucking key fob okay this thing is huge it's bulky it's a, you know you put it in your pocket you know it's there um pretty straightforward as far as what's going on with now they don't put um remote start on vehicles too much anymore and i'll tell you a reason why in a bit but this thing here because there is no fucking key, you have a push button with a little LED light on there right over here, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. It might be a little fuzzy. So the guy hands me the key to the car, and he says, okay, uh, go for a test drive. I says, okay, fine. So he hands me this thing here. I says, where's the key? He says, there is no key. 
He says, the uh, it's a push button start. I says, okay, fine. So I get in the car. The steering wheel is cocked a little bit like this to where I couldn't find or couldn't see the button for the fucking to start the car. So I go back in, and I'm like, all right, where's the pull start on this thing? I cannot find it. Or is this thing a pedal? You know, you have to sit there and pedal it to get it to roll and shit like that, kind of like the Flintstones. So... The guy says, oh, it's on the side of the dashboard right next to the, the air conditioning vent uh, on the radio side. Like, okay, so I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. So finally I get up close to it more and move the steering wheel, try to move the steering wheel. The steering wheel is kind of locked in a position. It doesn't move unless the car is running. Uh, and there it is. So I'm like, oh, okay. So it says engine start, stop. So I go ahead and I push the button and I'm like looking at it and it's like, didn't pay attention to what was coming on the screen. It's like, why isn't this thing fucking running? So as I looked up and on the screen it says, dummy, put your fucking foot on the brake and then start the car. Oh, okay. Sounds good to me. All right. So that's what I did. Other than that, this fucking car is tits. I, and I, I, I really like it a lot. I mean, everything lights up as far as your door panels, where your switches are. Everything that you're able to see, uh, the dashboard, as far as glare goes, is pretty damn good in the sun. Uh, even the radio, I like to have, have the radio set to the dark mode instead of having it set to the uh, you know the bright mode or whatever the fuck day mode, whatever the fuck you call it. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the one thing, you know, like when I first got this thing started, the first thing I played with was the radio. It's like, yep, that's got to be replaced. The radio sounds like ass. And luckily, it's not too difficult to replace this radio. And a lot of, uh, like if you go to Crutchfield, I'm, you know, I shop on Crutchfield all the time. Uh, I ordered a lot of car audio shit on there, some video equipment, uh, some home audio equipment I've ordered from them as well. Uh, yeah, they're kind of pricey, but um, it's better than buying shit at Walmart, I guess. I don't know if, if, you know. But you get what you want when you go shopping through Crutchfield. You find what you're looking for. Now, one thing about Crutchfield is it has a vehicle Pacific, um, you know, speakers and shit like that. So you can hunt down, put in your make, model, and everything else of your vehicle. And it'll tell you if this will fit, if that'll fit, you know, if you're just wanting to do speakers or, or head unit or whatever, it'll tell you, well, there is no head unit that fits this vehicle. Why? Because that is the head unit. All right. Now, this is what they call Sync 3. And basically what this does is it integrates everything that is here, 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 even the door fucking locks and shit, all integrate into the radio, all right, so it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, this is the radio per portion of it, as far as the touch screen and everything else goes, right behind here is the actual control module for that, all right, some people call it the amplifier, I just call it a control module, because I don't really see it, there is no amp behind this fucking this radio sounds like ass. So, I did find, however, a Pioneer, which is a um, modular, I guess you can call it, the screen. Now, it is the same size as this. You'll have to replace this bezel. Uh, and this bezel comes with adapters that you plug into the stock harness, that plug into the stock radio. In order for all of this shit here to be integrated just like this is right here. So what I ended up doing is hunting it down. And uh, I haven't ordered it yet, but I will be. And also new speakers, a couple amplifiers, and a subwoofer to put inside here. Like I said, that sounds like ass. Pretty cool as far as your heating and air conditioning goes. It kind of displays what your temperature you want it to be set at. And that also is integrated with the radio. Yeah. So everything from what I understand is supposed to work with the new radio inside here. And uh, yeah. So it also has vents on the back over here for your passenger. Like I said, this back seat over here 
The fucking Saturn didn't have room like this. So they took the Saturn as a trade, and I actually got some decent money for it. I was actually surprised that they took it as a trade to begin with, uh, and I think it was because of the audio system that was inside there was the reason why they took it as a trade. So I went in there, and like I said, I've been hunting down cars since March. All right. This is a 2020 Ford Escape SE, and it's got 77,000 plus miles on it, all right? I have found older cars with less miles on it more expensive than this one here. Yes, this is a used vehicle, has had no accidents, one owner, and I'm the second owner and very happy to have it. Uh... The nice thing about a lot of these websites for dealerships is they put their stock online, either new or used, or pre-owned, pre-fucked, whatever you want to call it. And what they'll do is they'll have a Carfax or Xfidian, I think Xfidian or something like that. Um, one of the companies that does your that checks your credit, they also do fucking check shit with your car and stuff now. Uh, it'll post on there everything from accidents owners you know uh title problems uh re-register re-registering the vehicle you know every year you have to get a sticker out here uh in the in illinois to re for registration on your vehicle otherwise they won't register it and you will be illegal to drive it on the roads um Including history as far as oil changes and shit like that goes. So it's kind of cool. I, I thought it was pretty pretty neat that uh, this shit would show up. Like before you would have to go to Carfax yourself. And it used to be free. And then now they want you to pay for it. But going to some of these websites for dealerships and shit. Now you're able to basically just click on an icon and you are there as far as checking the history of a vehicle that you're interested in. So I thought that was kind of cool. And again, I I don't buy vehicles. Uh, I kind of, you know, if I buy a vehicle, I keep that vehicle for a long time. And it's kind of like one of those things where, uh, you know, you're running it to the ground, so to speak. And that's kind of what I did with the Saturn a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so, like I said, since March, hunting and doing a bunch of online, none of the dealerships want you to just show up at the dealership anymore. They want you to make an appointment. You know, you like to test drive a vehicle, you ask or send them a message through the website uh, asking if the vehicle is still available, and then they'll contact you through email or by phone. And when I say email and phone, it's non-fucking-stop. You think scammers and spam shit is fucking bad? Just go and fucking give your information to a dealership. Oh, my God. I mean, shit. I ended up telling uh, Zillinger's out in Schaumburg that, uh, you know, I, I just I bought a vehicle. Stop fucking bugging me. And they're still sending me. After I unsubscribed to their... Uh, website and shit like that uh, I got another fucking email from them showing me more cars it's like god damn it so so far I've unsubscribed from them three times and I'm still getting shit from them including text messages yeah so it's kind of like one of those things where you know you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't when you go to a website and give them a little bit of information or show interest in a vehicle <clears throat> so what I ended up doing is calling them up and say take me off your fucking list already so that worked out pretty good. But anyways, um, so I started looking up more vehicles, more vehicles, more vehicles, different websites, different uh, dealerships, and started going into, I think it was Car Something online. And basically what it does, instead of you going to dealer websites, it picks up all the dealers that are around you in a certain amount of miles. You set that. Uh, you also set like how much you want to spend, what your down payment, what's this, what's that, what type of vehicle, year, model, mileage, and everything else. So I ended up posting, you know, setting up my parameters and was like, okay, let's see what pops up. Two. Two cars pop up for what I'm looking for. 
and they're nowhere near the mileage. Like I, I put like a twenty mile radius. Okay, they're nowhere near. They're like in fucking Chicago. It's like, yeah, I'm not going out there. Not just to, for to look at a car, look at it and say, okay, yeah, it's a car, and I'm not buying it because it's a piece of shit. So back on the hunt again. So I ended up saving, I found three vehicles that I ended up saving on my computer. I bookmarked them and got a hold of the dealers and shit, uh, like the next day to, you know, come on and make an appointment to see the car and test drive and shit. They sold. I'm like, son of a bitch. So I was, you know, talking with some friends and shit. And I was like, you know, this is bullshit. I it says, fucking, I, I saw these cars some of these cars just like like got on the lot and they you know the new arrivals is what they call them and they're sold like the next day that i ended up you know wanting to fucking uh take a look at it so it's like okay i gotta jump on this shit right now so the next vehicle i saw it's like well i bought the mercury from friendly ford it's it's you know let me go and, and check their website and stuff and see what's going on and they really didn't have too much as far as used vehicles go um they had besides this one they had a 2015 of this car and it had less miles it only had like 40 some odd thousand miles on it but it was in an accident and i kind of want to stay away from that and it was more than this fucking thing I'm like, son of a bitch. So I was talking with the guy and stuff, and, and it's like, you know, so how's the haggling as far as prices go? And it's like, well, you can haggle a little bit, but, you know, if you don't like what we're going, we're just going to tell you to walk. And I was like, okay. So I ended up getting a little bit of money taken off on this one, newer vehicle, uh, four years old. And the one thing about, you know, buying a pre-fucked vehicle, which is called used, uh all the problems, glitches, and especially with having, you know, all this computer shit that I really didn't want, uh, are fixed. Bugs, you know, recalls, whatever. And getting them all uh, taken care of before you purchase the vehicle is kind of a nice thing. Now, the one thing with this this radio system, this sync fucking shit, is you see that if I go to, was it vehicle? Uh... Let's see, no, that's not it. Let's go back. Let's go over here. Uh, automatic updates. All right. So, if you go into like the automatic updates, all right, and as you can see, I'm downloading something right now. The firmware for the vehicle constantly upgrades. Uh, now, that could be firmware for the vehicle, or that could be S Sync doing uh its thing and trying to like upgrade for a radio i don't know what it is until you know maybe there might be a change in the vehicle i don't know but that really kind of pisses me off a lot and it drives me nuts it's like god damn it stop fucking updating your worst thing a pc i mean shit so i mean current software version all right so sync 3 software version 3.0 uh, just downloaded a few days ago and now it's fucking doing it again so let's see here if I go back oh now what happened something happened so it just it, it's done no it's not done go back uh, yeah I don't know where the fuck it is Now, one of the cool things, like I was saying before, about not having um, a remote to start your car. All right, if you see this icon in here, Ford Pass. All right. Now, what? What are you doing? Oh, the car shut off. Probably, oh, I should have looked at the damn thing. All right, so restart because it's kind of warm outside. Got the air conditioner on here, and that fucking thing works great. So instead of having a remote for uh, starting your car if you're in the house or whatever, it's cold outside, it's on the phone. You download Ford Pass, and you set it up with your phone, 
you have uh, an option to lock and unlock the doors, and you have an option for auto st- for remote start on your cell phone. And it'll do it anywhere from around the world. So if I'm in fucking China or whatever, and I want to say, okay, well, you know, I want to run the car for a little bit and just slide the thing over on the uh, thing on my screen on my phone, and the car should be running. And it'll automatically shut off. So right now, uh, the car is set up. Oh, I bet you that's what that was. Yeah, 30-minute idle is turned on. It's been 30 minutes. The car shut itself off. How do you like that shit? So my thoughts of this vehicle, it's got pep. It's got, like, fucking get up and go like you wouldn't believe. Um... See, look, I just pushed that button for the auto stop to not stop. Uh, it's roomy. It's comfortable. With me and my back, you know, I, I've I had, some of you guys know I've had low back surgery, L5, L4, L5 fusion, uh, the old-fashioned way with cadaver bone and screws and shit like that. And I can't sit in a normal vehicle, but sitting in here, I mean, my legs are like almost sitting like I am in a regular chair. Uh, and then the chair being the seats being higher up, easier to get in and out instead of laying down when you're getting into a vehicle. So that helps out a lot. And what happens is, is I have problems, and they're my problems, not yours. So having my seat up higher really helps out with uh, getting in and out. Comfortable as far as driving goes. These seats are like fucking their bucket seats. And when you're driving and go to a turn and kind of pushes you from one side to the other side of the vehicle, these buckets actually keep you in place. And I like it's, it's very comfortable for me. I like it. I like it a lot. So, yeah, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys learned something with this video, some of you Ford fans out there. Again, you know, don't be pushing the fast forward and the fast forward on the dashboard over here to get into the hack for the radio because there's really nothing inside there you should be playing with period and if you do change try to change the theme of your radio good luck trying to put it back if you end up using the wrong resolution for the screen yeah like i said been there done that and almost had to take it to the dealer to fix it all right you guys take it easy have a good one and i will catch up with y'all later